In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Star Wars The Vintage Collection Queen Amidala on the Phantom Menace card as part of the reissue wave. <laughs> Hi there Star Wars collectors and welcome to another Boss Bounty video and as I mentioned in the intro, we're going to be taking a look at the Star Wars The Vintage Collection Queen Amidala on that Phantom Menace card. Of course, she is a reissue. We've had her before. Here she is. This is the previous version, Unpunched, which is quite nice. VC84, another one of these European cards with a big, big sticker on the back there. This is what she looks like now. A few marks on this card. This is one that I'm opening, so that's okay, because I do have another one of these. VC84 still, and obviously the other figures. I have reviewed the Battle Droid and the Anakin Skywalker Peasant Disguise, so check out those reviews. But we are going to be taking a look at this salt shaker of a figure. It doesn't really do a lot. It's really more for display. So we're going to be taking a look at this one. We're going to be opening up and comparing it to this one. Because I've been told that the photo reel on this figure is actually a massive improvement. And I'm not sure about that though, because I've seen a possible defect already just looking at it through the bubble. So we're going to get the figure out now and compare them to the old one. All right then, so here's the figure outside of the packaging and I'm gonna bring this thing that I thought was a defect up straight away. And it's this gold line that's going around her head. I don't know if you can see that there. You can just see that sort of gold paint that's going around. And I thought originally that might be overspill from this piece here, but it does go all the way round in like a circular fashion around her head. So it looks like it's intentional. Now, when you look at the card back, she does kind of have like something going along there. Now, whether they try to replicate that, I don't know. It's almost like where the hair dye has, hasn't really gone fully to the scalp. I don't really know what's going on there. Maybe it was intentional and they've tried to replicate that. But when you look at the previous one, she does not have that at all. It's just a completely uh, sort of gray, white face, China doll face. But when you look at the two figures together, it is a marked improvement. This one looks a lot more human-like, it has to be said. So in terms of that, they have done a great job. Obviously with the piece in the hair as well, that is now a nice sort of gold piece on the hair, whereas this was like a brown piece. So they've improved that as well. You can also see some of the paint apps on her dress have been improved as well, which is pretty cool. So, so all in all, uh, they have improved the paint apps on this figure. And just to give you a close up look at that face, it, does look pretty good I've got to say very nice indeed now the problem with this figure was always the fact that the arms material was was not soft goods so essentially it drapes like that so if if you ever have her arm up in the air you know <laughs> she's never gonna you know that's just never gonna happen is it your, your clothes just do not act like that but obviously she's just really designed to be like a sort of statue figure as it were she does have a bit of articulation with her legs, but of course she does have this hard plastic or soft vinyl, I guess, dress as well. So as I mentioned, it's like a salt shaker, isn't it? So she just sits there, stands there like that rather, and doesn't really do a lot else. The head is on a ball joint, which gives you lots of motion. And she, of course, she does have shoulders uh, ball hinged shoulders and she does have the ball hinged elbow there. But of course, of course, it doesn't really do a lot of good when you don't really want her arms up in the air like that when she's you know trying to direct traffic or something they've got to stay down like that for it to work she does come with a blaster tiny weeny little blaster which uh, is reminiscent to the one she has in the film you know bendy plastic because it's such a small blaster and let's just see if it fits into her hand There you go. But it does kind of get lost with the cuff of her of her dress there being, you know, that sort of solid piece of plastic. Uh, there's not really a lot else you can do with that, unfortunately. It does have these two bits of hair coming down here, which are again like a soft plastic. And as I say, it is literally a display figure, really. You can't do a lot with it. I mean, she doesn't do a lot in the film dressed like this, apart from look good. And there she is. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I think this head sculpt or photo reel rather, the deco is an improvement. It looks really good. And that actually looks really quite lifelike actually. I think that's 
pretty, pretty good. The eyes look good. Yeah, they've applied that pretty well. And as I say, I originally thought that that was like a, an error. It is on my other figure. I do have two of these. So not the original one. I bought two of the new one. And that does exist on the other one as well. And it looks too clean to be a mistake. So um, there you go. Some more paint apps on her hair. So there you go then, guys. That is Queen Amidala from the reissue wave. Let me know your thoughts in the comments just below. And thank you very much for watching as per usual. And we shall see you on the next one.